Dr. Taj, you uh, told me that you definitely see, you know, you, you have a very typical family practice and yet cosmetic practice, but like you do see children. So tell the yeah. mom, or, yeah, tell the mom or the dad out there the things which are important once they have a newborn baby. Maybe it's their first one and they're kind of a little nervous, a child starts teething and crying. Uh, when should they bring a child uh, to the uh, uh, dentist? What is um, the kind of mistakes you see they're making, things they should do and don't do, or things they do and shouldn't do, shade a little light on that whole thing. All right. Um, the biggest thing is that um, tooth decay, dental disease, is a, is a communicable disease. It's just like the flu or AIDS or whatever else you want to call it. So if the parent has decay, if the grandparents have black or um, uh, decaying teeth or bleeding gums, the child gets it. The child gets it. So very, very important for parents to take care of their own health, first and foremost. The child should be seen preferably before their first teeth um, erupt, which is about six months of age, would you recommend? What we do uh, is take a look at the child, of course, make sure that developmentally everything is in order, but mostly educate the parents and talk to them. Um, a child that doesn't have teeth still needs needs their mouth wiped after after um, drinking their milk. And um, if, although you want to nurture children and you want to feed them, among the ages, but you should still be educated into wiping the gums and, and keeping up with your own hygiene because if it's in the house, children get it. In fact, children who have siblings with dental decay are at much higher risk. Uh, for, for getting decay. So we usually treat families because of that. We encourage um, parents to come in and it's not very hard to be decay and gum disease free. It's not very expensive. It is definitely affordable. It's definitely attainable. And there are many offices who would, who would accommodate you. You don't have to have porcelain crowns to be decay free. So um, that's important. Um, cavities are contagious. I need parents to be aware of it. I have doctor patients who don't who, are, who don't realize that, but that's important. And it's one of one of the most common diseases of a child. It is worth looking into it. Mm, interesting cavities. Um, so basically, a cavity is an infection. Now, how does a mom who has gum disease and and, 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 and cavities going on transfer this to the baby by kissing and hugging uh, 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 him or her? You kiss a child, you share cups, you share spoons. It's almost impossible to share a home with a child and not communicate that disease because you, you just touch things. Yes, it is communicable, but if... If taking care of uh, their own mouths for parents are not feasible, the best advice I can give them is please don't share cups. Don't put your, your child's finger into your mouth. Um, I mean, uh, how can you ask a mother not to kiss their child? That's, uh, that's just impossible. So, I mean, bottom line, you gotta take care of yourself. Right. So, um, so, so the, the, the baby comes very early. And there's really not much to do, so I guess that makes the baby, um, it gets the baby used to the dental office isn't that mean, bad thing, um, you know, so that the first time a, a, a young child, let's say six, seven, eight, whenever comes to a doctor, she doesn't see the doctor with that <laughs> drill there, uh, who go, which goes in the mouth. So th there's a lots of comfort in the baby just by observing it and making sure everything else is right. Yes, and it's important for the children to accompany parents, and it should be a routine visit, and it should be a positive experience. We shouldn't wait till children have um, a bajillion cavities in their mouths and have extensive and need extensive treatment for them to to be introduced to a, a dental health care worker. It's it's just impossible. At that point, is a losing battle, and it takes years. I personally have patients who are introduced to me at seven. With 
20, it, it takes me a few years to get, to help the child get over that fear. But if they start young and they accompany parents for routine checks and, and if parents take care of the hygiene for the whole family, then the child, even if they get decay, it's not so drastic and it's, it's easily repairable and the child doesn't grow up with that fear. Because a lot of us, Mr. Flash, you and I are in that, that age group where maybe we did experience those those big cavity fillings with the bad smell of the dental office and grumpy dentists and all of that. And it, it's just scary for our generation. And in fact, if we go one generation back, a lot of dentists, a lot of kids didn't even go till they had infections and they are really afraid. I think, that's um, they, and that'll I, I think that is where this uh, horror story from a root canal come because in the old days uh, the root canal was done or the pulling a tooth was done when everything was already in so bad shape uh, that uh, it had to hurt plus the uh, much better Absolutely. equipment of course, right? You hear, right, equipment, knowledge, and you hear all these horror stories about root canals, but by the time people go get a root canal, the tooth is infected. So it's not the process of root canal, it's the infection that hurts. So, of course, you you associate that with pain, and, and we all have these horror stories about root canals. Well, let's go back to the children. What's the story about uh, the bottle syndrome? What is that really, and, um, and, and, and how can you, um, so to say, keep your child away from it. Baby bottle decay is uh, an infection of the teeth because when the child suckles on on um, the mom's breast or our um, a bottle, the 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 milk that they drink has is very Say for the child's development, but it also has sugar. And if the child's teeth are not wiped or cleaned afterwards, if the child sleeps the whole night with the bottle and suckles every now and then on it, the front teeth start getting decay. And it, I mean, uh, there are numerous, numerous cases that I've taken to uh, to an OR to treat because the, the decay is just so large and extensive that it's impossible to treat under, under office in, in an office setting. Mm. So what does a mom do? And it's a preventable disease. That's important for parents to realize dental decay is preventable. Right. So what does a mom do, a baby who keeps crying for the bottle at night and wants to sleep with the bottle, where, you know, basically soaps the teeth in, uh, be it apple juice or milk, it doesn't matter, it's all acidic, it's all uh, sugary. Uh, what, uh, what, what does a mom do? Well, they, they absolutely, the baby has to drink what they have to drink. Nutritional counseling is offered at our office. Um, uh, I mean, of course, I, I'm totally against juices. I've seen parents who give soda to their baby in a bottle. I'm absolutely against that. But milk, you can't stop. So what you do is let the child drink the milk that they need to drink and then either brush their teeth or wrap a terry cloth or some type of of a, a cloth or they, they sell these finger uh, brushes, um, wrap it on your finger and pry the lips apart and just just brush the teeth. doesn't have to be with a paste, it can be with water, but that sugar has to get off the teeth. Just like you don't leave your milk on, on your countertop when you go to bed, it rots. So the milk that sits on the child's teeth rots overnight and... You froze on me. Yeah. Well, I was. I. I didn't froze. I didn't freeze on me. I. I was. Did you hear what I said? No. It. Uh, the, the, when. When it, it rats on the countertop, that's where. That's where it stopped. And then you froze, and I didn't know anymore what to. Uh, what, what was going on? So. Oh. Um, 
We well, can look at it and edit if now, but most likely that that's going to be fine. So let me just go and ask the next question, and then we will edit it from there. And if not, we okay. uh, Sarah will tell us and we'll shoot it again. Um, okay. So um, okay. All right. So the teeth were what? So is it okay for a mom to uh, you know, let's say the baby really wants to go and and have something in the mouth and and suck on it to just fill the bottle with water? You can fill the water bottle with water. It's absolutely fine. And children get used to. We're raising children. They will get used to what needs to be. What needs to be. What needs to be. Just like you don't. You won't allow your child to chew on a rock. You will stop them. And if they cry, they. You know. That's part of parenting. Right. Well. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, definitely very uh, effective. Now let me ask you this. Um, we talked about gum disease um, in people, how devastating it is, how it, um, never mind that it loses you the teeth eventually, which is bad, but at least you guys can fix them. But it uh, ruins other organs, it brings the immune system down. Um, can you just change some short light on there of a mom who is pregnant? how actually the dental care or the health care for the baby starts there, which most moms know. But most moms do things like stop smoking, drinking, whatever it may be. But uh, uh, have you noticed that they may not be, you said that it's very important to have good uh, dental health uh, because it transmits it to the baby. What about before the baby is born, especially for mom, never mind dad? Yes, um, the um, uh, uh, mothers with gum disease have um, <laughs> low birth weight is linked to gum disease. So when you're expecting your child, it's very important to be infection free and gum disease free. And those microbes also are transferred to the child so the child can be born with those germs. So definitely um, a, a relation there, no doubt about it. Well. Informative, yes. uh, very, very informative, and I hope all of us are following uh, um, the advice, kind of like doctor's orders, but you know that somewhere along the line, we're not quite always doing what the doctor says, none of us, I at least not, sorry. Thank you very much, Dr. Dutch. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Flash.